Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Gotta thank everybody for stopping by. Certainly appreciate you guys subscribing to the Rev and Evan YouTube channel. Today we're talking tech, and we're gonna go ahead and install this PNR intercooler tank in a 2014 Mustang. This is my buddy Kevin's car. We've run a ton of passes on this thing. It's got a VMP supercharger, and up until now, all we've been running was the stock intercooler system as far as the uh, reservoir, the lines that come with the kit on the VMP blower. We're gonna upgrade now. This, which we're gonna mount in the trunk, gives you the opportunity to run not only ice, but a lot of it. This kit comes from Lethal Performance. My man Jared gave us a great deal on this thing, and it's got a lot of great features. You'll notice the shape. Well, that's on purpose because it fits directly in the wheel well and the spare tire well on an S197 Mustang. They also make them for other models too. It also has the tabs for mounting. It's got the pump pre-mounted. All you have to do is do some plumbing and some wiring, which we'll show you. And best of all, if you've ever fumbled with one of these tanks, you gotta go with the big filler uh, cap here because this allows you to use a scooper and scoop the ice right in so you could fill it quick and easy. A lot of them use the smaller fuel cell style uh, opening and it's just a pain in the butt. You gotta try to funnel the ice in real carefully. Ice goes everywhere. With this cap here, you pop the cap off. This is like for a pool pump. Scoop your ice in, fill it up, seal it up and go make a run. All right, so we went ahead and mounted the tank in the car, which is very simple to do. Drill three holes, set it up in there, center it, drill your holes, and mount the tank. Uh, following the instructions, it's pretty easy, and this deal fits beautifully in the S197 Mustang. You can kind of see how good it looks in there. What are we gonna do with this tank? Well, we're gonna fill it with ice water, because that's what the intended use is. Running ice water allows you to circulate ice cold water through the intercooler as opposed to just ambient temperature or slightly chilled water that goes through the heat exchanger. Now what does that do? When you've got ice water going through and cooling that intercooler, the intake charge that's just been compressed by the blower is gonna go through that ice cold chill that's the intercooler and it's gonna give you a denser charge in the cylinder. Well if you got denser charge, it means you have more oxygen and that means you can burn more fuel and make more horsepower. Now on a supercharged engine, that's especially important because you can get away with a little bit more timing, and if you can get away with more timing, you're gonna make even more power. So hopefully, this thing will go quicker on track, we'll pick up a few horsepower by way of ice. Quiet on set. All right, so in this application here, we gotta take the front bumper cover off. With the VMP supercharger, this will show you the heat exchanger that's on there. And so we need to get to the hoses on the heat exchanger and it's just easier because it only takes a few seconds to pop the bumper cover off on an S197. So here we go and now we can do some uh, mounting of the hoses and run the plumbing. So the way the car is set up now is basically a closed system. You've got a reservoir here that holds the coolant and coolant in the system. You've got a heat exchanger so water flows through the pump which you can see right here. It goes through the heat exchanger into the intercooler and then back to the reservoir. What we're gonna be doing is deleting the reservoir because we have a big giant tank for ice water now. And then we're also deleting this pump because we'll have a big pump that's gonna be mounted in the back of the car. So as you can see with this reservoir and this factory style cap, you really, it's, you could put ice in there if you want, but it, it's only gonna chill down about that much coolant. I don't know how big that is, but it's not very big. And it's not really designed to have the lid off and ice being put into it. The setup we're gonna have now is gonna allow us to ice the thing down so the water that's circulating through this system is gonna be chilled down and, uh, and we'll pick up the performance of the car by running ice through the intercooler. All right, so we're back to the trunk of the car. Abe's doing his handiwork back here. We're gonna drill three holes. One's gonna be the feed up to the front, 
One's going to be for the return back to the tank, and another one is going to be the tank drain because you do have to be able to drain uh, the water level down lower if you want to refill with ice. All right, so we measured out the hose. Abe's set it up in the trunk where it's going to be mounted to the pump and to the tank for the feed and the return. We've notched out a spot here. We've come down through. It's a little bit tricky because it's very tight under here. You'd think you have a ton of room, but you really don't because you really can't have it near anything that's moving or you don't want the hose near the exhaust system. So, All right, so we're working with some three-quarter inch hose here. Um, it's not small stuff, but it's going to flow real nice. We'll tuck it up to the car and make everything nice and neat. You'll see this will run up next to the frame rail here. We'll feed it up into the engine compartment, make our proper connections, then we'll do the wiring, and then we'll be ready to run. All right, so we got the hoses connected. We've got our feed from the tank. This now goes to the heat exchanger, which is here. And then we've got our uh, return that goes back to the tank. In a race car application, race only, you could do away with the heat exchanger. And you could literally have the tank and the ice water going right to the intercooler and right back to the tank. But being this is a street-driven car, and it's also bracket raced, we're going to keep this uh, heat exchanger. It also has fans on it, electric fans. So we'll get a little bit of extra cooling. And now we'll go to the back of the car and show you what we did back there. Too. We got the tank permanently mounted. We've got our hoses all hooked up. All that we have left to do is some wiring. But before we do the uh, completed wiring, we're actually just going to hook it to this battery right here. We've put water in the tank and we're going to just check for leaks, which is also why we didn't put the front fascia on yet. We just want to circulate some fluid and a, a coolant through the system. In this case, we're just using water and we're going to make sure that nothing leaks because the last thing you want to do is put the front fascia back on tidy everything up and then have a drip or have a leak so we're gonna see the works i know there's a five second delay on this thing yep we got a little delay here it goes and action all right, all right just because we are racers we have to test with ice and see if it feels cold so we're going to dump some ice in you can also see what's real nice about this setup is the uh, big wide mouth on the top of the tank. Are you talking about me? Oh yeah. Big wide mouth. Look at that. All right. It's like an igloo in there. Mark, how cold is that? It's cold. Let's see. 40 degrees. 40 degrees? 40 degrees. All right. Abe, what do you think? Is that 40 degrees? 33. 33? I'm going to try. Yep. That's freaking cold. Let's see it circulate and uh, the, uh, the... The tank's got a lot of condensation on it. How cold is the tank? It's about uh, Michigan cold. Yeah, all right. And we'll do our handy Denny wiring setup. You see the ice plates move? All right, here we go. See some global warming. Pump going. Right here's some ice crunching. The tank has a nice baffle in it to prevent the ice from getting into the system, so it's only taking the water. And now we'll cut up front and see what we're looking like up there. All right, so we got the pump running. We filled the tank with ice. Our lower hose over here should be really cold, and it's freezing cold. See with the hose, this hose is really cold. It's actually cold coming out, of course, because the engine's not running. But this will have ice water going through it. It's gonna cool the intake charge down a lot. And then we got our heat exchanger here. So this side, oh yeah, this is freaking cold. And everything's cold on it now. So this won't be as cold when it's running because it'll have already come through the system. So this will give it another opportunity to uh, get some heat out of the water before it makes it back to the tank. Again, if this was a race car, you could delete this, but being a street car, we're gonna leave it in there. And right now we have the system on key on, just for uh, simplicity's sake. So as soon as you turn the key, it's circulating, but ultimately we'll put a kill switch in there because you don't wanna lose all your ice on the way to the staging lane. So you ice it up, turn the thing off, get to the lanes, run it for a few minutes before you make that pass, and everything going through this blower is gonna be cooled down. Hopefully we'll see some temp drops, but we'll try that out once we get to the track.
installed the ice tank in the car. My man Kevin McKenna, former world champ, is the driver. Did great job on sick week. We put the ice tank to the test, Kevin. What did it do? You know, I don't want to say that I was skeptical, but I didn't think it would be worth as much as it was. And really, just based on the weather, I would say easily a tenth of a second, probably a little more once we, we maybe learn how to use it a little better, uh, you know, how much ice to put in it, when to put it in. But uh, it, it was really amazing to see the results. You know, you, you could tell before I ever got the time slip, I knew it was a really good run. Yeah, when you launched on that run with the ice in the tank versus just using the water that was at ambient temperature, you left like a rocket. So what everybody's going to want to know is what were the numbers before and what were the numbers after? Well, when, when, when we did Sick, sick Week uh, back in uh, early February, the car was in, it, it did go 1040, but that was in some really good air. You had, you know, here it's warm, it's humid. Uh, I really expected the car to go probably 1055 or so. Right. It surprised us. It went 1042 at 131 miles an hour, which it rarely runs that kind of speed. That That's really, that was even into a headwind. So it, it you know, I think we've just scratched the, the surface of the potential of what the ice tank will do. But, you know, to say that it was a noticeable improvement would be an understatement. Yeah, so I mean, it's a great thing to have. You're gonna utilize that during racing too because if you gotta find a tent, if you gotta pick up some ET, it's just as simple as putting ice in the tank, right? Sure, there, there, there's two things we wanna do. You know, number one, we wanna put this car in the nines, which we're now real close, right. with, with a race tune and some fuel. The ice tank should probably get us there once we get the right weather, but also, I bracket race this car a lot. I, you know, NMRA class race it, and there are times where the weather moves or maybe you've got an issue where you know, you, you can't run your dial in. The easy solution now, instead of trying to move weight around or do something, throw a bag of ice in there and you've got whatever you need. So it, it, it's got kind of a couple functions and, and I'm kind of looking forward to, to getting some data and seeing just how much it's worth when we do play with it some more. Yeah, because, because it's chilling down to air intake charge, it is critical when you put the ice in. We did put the ice in, in the, right before Kevin went into the staging lanes. So that was optimized but we still haven't installed a switch where you can turn the intercooler pump off. So that'll help too once we do that. So basically as soon as he starts the engine, the pump is running and you're gonna to start to lose your ice. The real key would be turn the pump off and then turn it on right before you run. But hey, we gotta start somewhere with this thing. We made it out to the track. You did go in the 1040s with the ice in this hot Florida weather. It's pretty amazing. So once again, this is a system from Lethal Performance. You gotta check. Check them out online. They do a great job. Coastal did the tune. My man Sam over at Coastal Dino in Tampa. And the Rev and Evan channel, we're just rocking it out. Thanks, Kev. It's all good.